G'day, I'm Adam, VK4GHZ. I've been wanting to play on ham radio satellites for quite a while now and uh, finally starting to make things happen. Uh, back in 2020, during COVID lockdowns, I was co-developing a Nexion touchscreen interface for Anthony Good's excellent antenna rotator control project. You know, three, that was three years ago and I'm finally getting around to actually implementing the, the stuff that I um, help co-design and uh, I build up some of my own rotator control boards. To track satellites you need to move your antennas in the azimuth plane and also in elevation as they're sort of flying over across the top of you. Now you could buy a purpose-built rotator that does az azimuth and elevation such as the Yosu G5500 but um, you know they're pretty expensive they're 1300 Australian dollars at the moment. <coughs> Now you can do much the same thing for a lot less money by implement, implementing something like this. So you've already got your Yagis, you've already got your azimuth uh, rotator, all you need is some sort of system to adjust the elevation and that's exactly what this is. Some people spruik the idea of just fixing your Yagis at 30 degrees and that'll capture most of the satellite paths, pass, but uh, doing that you, you start compromising your, your terrestrial activity where you want your Yagis pretty much on the horizon. Just rig up a bearing arrangement like this. Um, it's, it's easier than you think, not that expensive. Stick around and I'll show you what I've been up to. Oh. Miss, miss, that's a big miss. All right, the cross boom. This is a non-metallic cross boom made from FRP. It comes from a company called GRP Australia, who are apparently revolutionizing the building industry. I quote, glass fiber reinforced polymer building materials are lightweight, super strong, won't corrust, or corrust won't corrode or rust. They're the perfect solution for wet areas, areas with high corrosion risk, beachside buildings or structures that are close to or exposed to water, rain, harsh sun, or other elements that would reduce the structural integrity of traditional building materials. In other words, they're great for outdoor use. And they also come in a very attractive yellow color. Composite material or polymer made of resin plastic, reinforced by fibers made of glass. This product is not classified as hazardous according to the criteria of the National Occupational Health and Safety Commission of Australia. Whew, so that's good to know as well. I'll have links to the company's website and data sheets in the article you'll find on vk4ghz.com. Now they come in standard lengths of 5.8 metres, uh, this of various diameters. This has a 38mm uh, outside diameter, remember that, 38. Uh, and it has a five millimetre wall. It weighs 1.0 kilos per metre length. Not too heavy, but it's strong. And it costs uh, 66 bucks in uh, 2020. It's easy to work with. Just use a hacksaw to cut it to the required length. Now, this, this is actually the offcut from the 5.8 metre length that I bought. The real cross boom is up on the roof with the Yagi's already fixed to it. Uh, it was just easier to work with this shorter length while I was developing this elevation system. <sighs> Hopeless. Right, the bearing itself. This is probably the main obstacle for most people. I'll just remove the pin here. Uh, it consists of either side we've got some aluminium tubing. You need thick wall aluminium tubing so when you, you, you're clamping it to your mounting plate it doesn't crush so you know you're kind of limited in your, in your choice of material here so anyway this particular aluminium tubing is just leftovers from antenna masts and other projects has an outside diameter of 48.4 millimeters a 4.47 millimeter wall and an inside diameter of about 39.5 mil uh, came from Action Aluminium here in Brisbane. I'm sure there are many aluminium suppliers that will have this, uh, this tubing. And it's held to the, as I said, to the mounting plate with U-clamps, U-bolts and the V-clamps. Standard arrangement. 
So the only metal used in this arrangement here is the, the, the U-bolts, the V-clamp, the mounting plate and that aluminium tubing. And we have some stainless steel hose clamps. And the box here, we'll get to that in a minute. So the rest of it is, is non-conductive. So just going through this, we have some 40 millimeter PVC pressure pipe couplers. When I started making this a couple of years ago, I actually, for some reason, I used JB Weld, which is that two-part epoxy mix, uh, to glue the outside coupler on. I don't know why I did that. I think I started uh, using sandpaper to, because I was such a tight fit to remove some of the inside of the coupler, then glue it on. But what I've done with the later ones, which I've just done a few weeks ago, they're a nice tight compression fit. So no glue required at all. So 40 mil pressure pipe couplers. Inside the couplers, we have some bushes. These actually come from truck parts places. These are nylon, described as a nylon camshaft bush for Eaton, Mac and Rockwell front and drive axles flanged. So you see the flange there. They also include an O-ring. I pissed the O-ring off, don't need it. It's also a very tight fit initially, putting it over with the O-ring. Um, yeah, can't get that on. However, once you have used the O-ring once or twice, they do actually slide on. So it's actually quite a nice snug fit over that. These red ones are also uh, bushes, inside diameter 38 mil. They just feel a little bit more solid. Meant to be the same dimensions, but pff, yeah. So, inside this inner coupler, we have one of these white bushes, and there, and on the inside of the outer coupler, we have one of these red bushes. And to keep the red bush in place, we have another one of these white bushes, just keeping it butted up against the end, with a stainless steel hose clamp. That's just mirrored on the other side. So all in all, we have uh, one, two, three, four of these, and we have two of these. These aren't that expensive. Um, these are less than two dollars each, and these ones uh, were about just under six bucks each. And they're a truck part. Uh, stainless steel hose clamps at the end there to, to keep it all together. In the middle here, you'll see the the V-clamp actually keeps the two inner bushes from wandering, so that's a nice snug fit, and it just turns effortlessly, like so. So, not that difficult to, uh, to get together. Now, being stupid, I originally purchased some nice ball bearing units with the pillow blocks. I mean, these things are just silky smooth. But being metal, they're going to rust out outside, aren't they? So, and, and they're very heavy. So, although this is a little bit agricultural and maybe crude, it do does the job just as well. Now, the linear actuator. Yes, got it. Linear actuator. This um, came off eBay. It's a 12 volt DC unit. It's uh, rated to 150 kilos of, of load and it has 350 millimetres of travel. You can buy these with various uh, varying degrees of travel. Um, 350, I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll give myself uh, as much uh, playroom as, as possible. Now, I also did want a, uh, a weatherproof cover for this. They were $20, but the particular eBayer I got this off, couldn't find them. They got lost in their warehouse. So it's something I do need to follow up on. Now being a DC motor, it's really easy to reverse the direction of travel just by simply swapping the polarity around. And DC also allows you the opportunity to control the speed. So what I've done with the K3NG rotator controller system is I've implemented the PWM feature. So that will give it a uh, soft start and a soft stop. We can demonstrate that. Just let me put this pin in here and hook it all up. Have a listen to this. You hear it ramping up in speed. And likewise, when we go to stop it, 
you can hear that, which is always a good thing. The, the problem with the, the, the older Yosu G5500 is that they had AC motors and when you went to rotate them, it was just a sudden start and a sudden stop. And if you had a really big array, that could tend to uh, cause some swaying, uh, which is not good for the internal gearing. You just have premature uh, fade on your, or wear on your gears. So um, being, having, having a slow start and slow stop is uh, pretty good. So the 350 millimeter actuator actually worked out quite well because what I need here is 301 millimeters of travel and that offers me 102 degrees of rotation. Obviously we're, we're looking for, for at least 90 but the 102 degrees gives me uh, 12 degrees and plus or minus six degrees at either end of, uh, of uh, room to play with, which is good. Now that was determined uh, by using a, a spirit level app on the phone so I could measure it uh, at its upper extremity and at its lower extremity and we just tweaked the, the dimension or the height uh, of where the actuator is mounted to, uh, to give me at least 90 degrees. Now the actuator is mounted, uh, where do I do that? 645 millimetres from the centre centre line of the cross boom up to where the bracket is. Now I did have a bit of a, a constraint coming back because this is being mounted on a hazer trolley which goes up and down the, the tower. I only had 60 millimetres of clearance between the, the main mast and um, part of the, the, the tower arrangement. So I've actually made this so it only comes back 40 millimetres. From, uh, from the main mast. So yeah, make sure you've got 90 degrees of, 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 of tilt available. And I'm also using some nylon washers just to soak up, soak up the, the slop in the, uh, the actuator pins. All right, the elevation sensor. That's in this little box here. Um, it's a die cast aluminium box and inside that is uh, a sensor using the ADXL345 accelerometer. accelerometer. The ADXL345 accelerometer. Now it communicates back to the Teensy in the, the K3NG controller board there um, over I2C and I'm using some bus extender chips at either end. And during development I was getting up to uh, 50 metres of, uh, of cable, no problem. Rather, I only had a 50 metre cable of a length of, of Cat5 to play with and it worked fine. The actual installation here will be less than 20, so I don't anticipate any problem whatsoever using the I2C bus here. The back of the, uh, the sensor box, I've used a two-part epoxy called JV Weld to glue on a, a V-clamp to it. So that would help it sit, um, locate and sit on the, uh, the tubing. Now it's a little bit, <laughs> it was a bit awkward to, to get a U-bolt to uh, hold that on, which you know, you'd normally use a U-bolt with a V-clamp like that. But, so what I, what I ended up doing was using a stainless steel hose clamp and to keep that in place, uh, there's a three millimeter pin. I've just draw, drilled a 3.2 millimeter hole in the, uh, the V-block. And that three millimeter pin is actually uh, left over, these are just pegboard brackets. And the various things you, when you're hanging your tools on a pegboard. Never did like the pegboard, so I've got all these spare bits of three millimeter uh, steel. So right, let's just hook the pin up. I'm gonna get this one, I can feel it in my bones. Ah, uh, look at that. What did I do with the pin? Right where I left it. So, hang on, let me command that to go to zero. The K3NG controller system, along with the touchscreen, fantastic. Love it. So, Goody, appreciate all your work you put into that controller system and all the, the software that you've developed for it. To get the 102 degrees of, 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 of movement 
This required 301 millimetres of travel. Now as we only need to travel nine, uh, move at 90 degrees, it's, um, I guess the travel is going to be 200 and 270, 280 millimetres. So there we go, that's, that's sitting at, uh, that's parked at zero degrees. All right, I'll do some more videos on this project once the antennas, once the antennas are on it and up in the air. What I need to do now is disassemble this and uh, put all these bearings and bushes on the longer piece of uh, cross boom, which is to be used up on the tower. All right, thanks for watching. See you then. Oh, almost forgot. Worst thing I ever heard. It was terrible. Horrendous. <laughs> well, it wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah? Well, there were parts of it I liked. Yeah, I liked a lot of it. Yeah, it was good. It I... was great. It's wonderful. Oh, bravo. More. 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 Now can I say it? Yep. Go away! Scrum! Get out of here! Get out of here! Skittle! Go away! Ham's gray! Well, come on. All right.